Uh, good afternoon to everyone. I'd like to start off by reading a quote to us, which goes, the function of sociology as of every science is to reveal that which is hidden. With this, I welcome everyone to the Sociology Day program, which is organized by the Department of Sociology, UG Tetsu College, under the banner Sociology and its relevance today. To begin, uh, let us have an invocation prayer for the program by Ai Sung Jumla Waling, Sixth Semester Tetsu College. Good evening, everyone. Let me pray for all of us. Most precious Heavenly Father, as we thank you for thank you for blessing us this wonderful day and good health. Father, as we begin our program, may your spirit be with us, guide us and lead us, help us to act best upon your wisdom. Father, we bless our heart and this time in your mighty hand. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Uh, thank you. We will now have a presentation on History of Sociology in India by Tia Kampal Lamtur, 6th semester, Tetsu College. Hello, good evening everyone. I will come in everyone on this very good day of sociology, sociology day. Before I start off my presentation, I welcome each and everyone. The topic which I will be presenting now is about the history of sociology in India. On introduction, sociology as a scholarly discipline emerged primarily out of enlightenment thought as a positive positivist science of society shortly after the French Revolution. It genesis it genesis on the various key movement in the philosophy of science and the philosophy of knowledge, arising in reaction to such issue as modernity, capitalism, urbanization, rationalization, colonization and imperialism. During its nation stage, within the late 19th century, sociological deliberation took particular interest in the emergence of the modern nation state, including its constituent institution, units of socialization, and its means of surveillance. As such, an, as such, an emphasis of the concept of modernity rather than the Enlightenment often distinguish sociological discourse from that of sociological of classical political philosophy. Now on the development of sociology in India, sociology and social anthropology developed in India in the colonial interest and intellectual curiosity of the Western scholars on the one hand. The origin of sociology and social anthropology in India can be traced to the days when the British officials Realized the need of need to understand the nat native society and its culture in the interest of smooth administration. Study conducted by Max Weber in Hinduism also contributed to the growth of, of studies in Indian society. He got interested in Hinduism and other Oriental religion in the context of developing to the theory. Namely, the spirit of capitalism and the principle of rationality develop only in the West. Thus, Indian society and culture become the testing ground of various theories and a field to study such problems as growth of towns, poverty, religion, land tenure, village social organization, and other native social institutions. This whole period of 19th century gave rise to ethnographic studies that is, studies of caste, religion, rituals, costume, which provide a foundation to colonial rule for establishing dominance over India. Nicholas Dirks observed that recently final ethnographic contribution to colonial knowledge thus 
regulate the divineness of God, as well as its fundamental compatibility with politics. Only in the two register of ancient Indian monarchy of modern Britain benevolent despotism. According to Srinivas and Panini, 1973-1981, the growth of the two disciplines in India falls into three phases. The first covering the period between 1773 to 1980, when their foundation were laid. The second, 1901 to 1950 AD, when they become in professionalized, and finally the post-independent year, where a complex of forces, including the undertaking of plan development by the government, the undertaking of planned government by the government, the increased exposure of Indian culture to the work, of their foreign colleges and the availability of funds resulted in cons resulted in considerable research activities. The development of sociology, sociology can be divided into four sections from pre-independent India to the 90s. Sociology in the pre-independent period 1917 to 1946. No rigid distin distinction was made between sociology on the one hand and social psychology social philosophy, social anthropology, social work, and other social science such as economic and history of the other. Another university stated that teaching of sociology and social anthropology before 1947 was born in the late 1930s with Irrawati Garvey as the head. Another center of influence in sociological theory and research was of Lucknow, that is introduced sociology in the Department of Economics and Sociology in 1921, with Radha Kamal Mukherjee at its head. Bombay University started teaching of sociology by a grant by a grant of Government of India in 1914. In the case of teaching of Indian social institutions, the orientation showed more ideological emphasis on the one hand and a concern for social pathological problems at Ethnological description on the other. As is clear by now that sociological did its formal beginning in 1917 at Calcutta University, owing to the active interest and effort of South Indian social sociological sociology made its appearance of Mysore University by the effort of BN BN Seal and A F Wadia in 1928. Sociology in the post-independence period, 1947 to 1966. Many other highly diversified curriculum structures in proper sociology exist, including such specialization as rural and urban sociology, sociology of kinship, sociology of religion, sociology of stratification, sociology of education, political sociology, medical sociology, social demography, and Sociology of Economic Development. Before independence, the teaching of sociology and social anthropology was mainly, if not wholly influenced by the then current theor theoretical concern in Great Britain. After independence, however, American sociological tradition had a major impact on the teaching of sociology in India. Secondly, Sociology established its identity as discipline by separating itself from psychology, anthropology, social philosophy, and social work. Toward the end of its of this period, we also witnessed the interest on the part of the central government to promote social science research, research through a formal organization established for the purpose. The growing need of planners and Administra administrator on the one hand, and the realization of increased importance of sociological thinking and research in the planning process on the other, open up opportunity for research projects. In the most of such diverse intellectual stimuli, Indian sociologists began to criticize, modify, and develop diverse sociological 
approaches in the study of Indian society and culture. And these are reflected in the course of Indian society, problems of rural development, industrialization and expansion of education, control of population, new political processes and institutions, social and political movement, attracted that area of social life. Development in the 70s. There have been a few reviews of development in sociology and social anthropology since earlier time till 1970s and onwards 20. While earlier village community studies dominated research but the interest in the area of agrarian relation, land reform, peasant, agriculture, labor, and schedule tribe and caste began to attract greater Attention of sociologists and social anthropologists in the 70s. Rao 1982 reviewed the development in the 70s under three heads. One area of the interest and spe specialization which got crystallized. Two area of interest which has developed but not got crystallized. Three emergence of new opportunity in the established area. The other area of interest that were crystallized in the 70s were industrial sociology, urban sociology, and social stratification. Perspective in the 80s and 90s, there has been thinking that research should be promoted in the 90s in the area of sociology of planning and development, sociology of profession, sociology of organization, social dimension, of poverty, law and social change, sociology of national integration, etc. Damai, 1982, anticipated the talks of sociology for the 80s in India, which was the analyze the transformation of Indian society, the limits of such transformation, and the impact of these limits to such transformation, which was affected either in the frustration of effort to surmount the obstacle. The impact of globalization on Indian cultural heritage and general life situation of the people of the country has generated new area that deserve the attention of Indian sociologists who do seem to be and who do seem to be attentive to such relevant areas as civic society. Gupta 1977, 1997 crisis and resiliences in the process of social change since 1993 and secularism and national integration or 1991 1997 but specific social implication implication of the new economic policy is yet to be analyzed now the development of sociology in the northeast region coming to sociology in northeast india the discipline can be said to be an extended family of the parent university located in the metropolis. In the opinion of Nicholas Kumar, 1998-93, the discipline of sociology in the region started first in Assam at Gibraltar University in the mid of 1960s. This is the first university that taught postgraduate level in sociology in the region. The second department of sociology started at Northeastern Himal Northeastern Hill University in 1976 at Shillong. Subsequently, with creation of university in Nagaland, Tilchar Assam, and Tispur Assam, the number of postgraduate departments in sociology offering postgraduate courses and research programs has increased to five. Today, these universities from the region are producing substantial number of postgraduate in sociology every year. In Nagaland, with the start of Nagaland University in Lumamis, Koima in 1994, the Department of Sociology under the School of Social Science was established on 6 September 1997 at University Headquarters, Lumami, with 25 students in tech capacity in the initial stage. The intake capacity has over the year increasing from 25 in 1997 to 55 students in 2012, thus making the total strength of postgraduate students to 110. 
the PhD research program also got started in the department during 2003. Since then, admission in PhD research, PhD, PhD research program have progressively increased each year. Apart from postgraduate and PhD program, the department also run two UGC sponsored centers, namely Tribal Research Center and Center for Gandhian Studies and Research. And in and in conclusion, to conclude the history, the history of the development of sociology has not been much encouraging at its beginning. Anthropology and ethnology helped the colonial rule to establish its foundation in other words. The discipline of sociology was partly responsible for the survival of con colonialism and feudalism in princely states. The feudal mentality of Indian people is thus due to sociology, anthropology, and ethnology. It must be said that this discipline has not been worth itself in India. There are several problems of the country. The problems are multi-ethnic, multi-caste, multi multi-caste, multi-religion, multi-region, and multi-linguistic. Economic problems coupled with unemployment are disasters. It is expected of sociology to analyze the social life and bring out some solution. With this, I conclude my presentation. Now I give them to the chairperson. Thank you. Thank you for the insightful presentation. Moving on, I would like to give this time to our guest speaker, Dr. Ruth Lalsim Sang Bungpui, Assistant Professor, Department of Tribal Studies, Manipur University of Culture. She has completed her PhD in Sociology from Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. She, has also, she also has multiple publications and also presented papers both on national and international conferences. A uh, very good afternoon, everyone. I hope I'm audible. Okay, with a uh, blank screen being before me, I cannot actually know whether you can hear me or not, but I take it for granted that you can hear me. Okay. Um, thank you for okay, thank you for the generous introduction. Uh, greetings to everyone in Texo College. Uh, it is my proud privilege to be a part of uh, today's celebration of Sociology Day and to be given the opportunity to speak on this very auspicious day. You know, the pandemic has, drive, uh, has driven us physically apart, but technology is bringing us closer together, thanks to technology that near or far we can meet in virtual platform. Today, as that so celebrates Sociology Day, you know, I want us to acknowledge the contribution of scholars who have been the pioneer to the introduction of sociology. August Gomm, Herbert Spencer, uh, Amal Durkheim, Karl Marx, and many more, as we have just heard, you know, have, man, have made immense theoretical contribution to sociology. With these few words, you know, I will in a brief time uh, just give an overview of sociology. And I since the link is also provided to other to students from other disciplines, I believe that there are students from other disciplines joining us too. Then I will also, in a very brief, uh, discuss on the career guidance, especially for the graduating students. Okay, so, um, and also I was told that I have 20 minutes time, so I hope I can fix my talk within this time limit. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, in case if I am not audible in between, okay, you just let me know. Or in case if there is any technical problem, you just let me know. <clears throat> okay, so today I will not go very detailed and I'm not going to go very theoretical in my talk today. Okay, all of you have been, especially for the students of sociology from the first semester, the third semester, you have been studying everything. Everything, I guess, will be in your mind now, right? So today it's just going to be a recap of what we have studied. 
okay the, the the important points are just highlighted because with this span of time we cannot go very detailed so uh, i and also i want to let students know that it's always good to go to basic that's very important okay so uh if i uh and in this uh presentations i will discuss uh, briefly on the subject matter sociology i will also discuss on the basic background of sociology its perspective methodology and so here i said what is sociology right so if i ask this question to the students within a span of finger with like a span of finger you know they will be able to respond some may say sociology is a study of society Okay, some may say the study of human relationship or it's the study of human life. So if we talk in terms of the subject matter of sociology, it is very diverse from family, <clears throat> excuse me, kinship, culture, political system, economic, religion, state, ecology, the list goes on. So sociology, you know, it's a very interesting field of study. It touches every aspect at the family level or let's say at the individual level you know sociology help us understand various matters what is family like we studied that why family exists or let's take the instance of kinship my relationship with my relatives okay or how do we address our relatives or let's say in terms of marriage we get to understand the type of marriage monogamy polygamy polygyny or we understand the the marriage rules who can marry whom right or why people believe in a particular God, or why do they believe in many gods, and many more aspects we studied in religion, right? And also sociology examines and help us understand different aspects. If we talk in terms of the community level, the political system, at the community level, you know, say the political system, the voting system, we look in terms of culture, the process of assimilation, the process of diffusionism, or let's say in terms of education, okay, or social movements. And coming to the larger context, sociology helps us deals, it, it deals with studies on social problems, climate change, or it can be in terms of population growth, welfare measures, development issues, and so on. So we can see how sociology, it helps in analyzing and explaining important matters in the society. <clears throat> So in this uh, diagram, you can see you know, the various that sociology has various branches. Here, I just want to focus very shortly on some of the branches. Some of the branches of sociology. One is historical sociology. Historical sociology it um, gives a background, you know, of social event, which is very important in understanding the present context. Without understanding the past, there is no way of understanding the present, right? Or sociology of law. It's another branch of sociology, and it is considered sociology of law is considered to be a part of society. Without law, there will be troubles in society, right? Law is considered as an important means of social control within the family or within society, right? We have our customary law, which is very much important. It's it's through this that we deal with our cases, right? In terms of marriage, in terms of inheritance, or we have political sociology which is another branch of sociology which studies various, uh, uh, for instance, in terms of the political system, the voting behavior, the functioning of the political parties, or we talk of sociology of economy, which, is, uh, which deals with the studies of production of goods, distribution, consumption. On the other hand, see, we also, uh, rural sociology is also a part of uh, one of the branches of sociology. And rural sociology deals with the study of the life of the rural people, okay, their behavior, they, their belief, their culture. And we also have urban sociology, which on the other hand studies the way of the life of the urban people. Their social organization, industrialization. And we also have medical and sociology, very interestingly. You know, it is a combination of medical science and sociology. Medical sociology helps in understanding matters relating to health, medical care, sicknesses, uh, disease, and so on. So, apart from mentioned uh, um, branches, you know, there are a number of other branches of, socio of sociology. Looking at the branches of sociology, it can be said that it is a discipline that is inherently interdisciplinary. 
as a subject matter of sociology is varied, which covers all aspects within the society. Hence, sociology has relationship with other sciences, since with anthropology, history, economics, management, political science, and many other. Uh, I also just want to brief through and talk in terms of the social, sociological perspective. Understanding and acknowledging you know, the relationship between one's life and the world around us is what is meant by sociological perspective. Uh, we have evolutionary perspective, which explains how human societies originate and grow. Okay, we, we can refer to the work of August Gomm, Herbert Spencer, or the functional perspective, which looks into how society as an organized network of cooperating groups. Okay, we can refer to the works of Redcliffe Brown. And then another is con conflict perspective, which argued the unstable system of opposing group and classes. We have Karl Marx, uh, a very renowned scholar, and also looking into the per inter interactionist perspective. Here, symbols, interactionist perspective looks in terms of symbols. Okay, they consider that it is through symbols that human interact. And these symbols can be in the form of gestures, signs, symbols, etc. So up to now, we have discussed on with how sociology is the study of various aspects of society. Then how is it possible that such studies are carried out? How, how do sociologists carry out such studies is one question that anyone can ask. Because we say so, so, sociologists studies every aspect of society. Sociology gave importance to gathering evidences, which means it is based on first-hand information about the social world. Two methods of data collection, namely quantitative and qualitative methods, are used in sociology. So quantitative method, it involves you know, the use of methodological uh, techniques that represent human experiences in numerical categories. Sometimes it is referred to as statistics. And qualitative methods provides detailed description and analysis of the quality of the human experiences. I don't know whether if students have in BA courses, do you have um, uh, field work? If you have, I guess you will all be able to relate with all these methodological implications. So, uh, and when we talk of qualitative methods, the method of data collection includes interview, ethnography, survey, observation, case study. Okay, these are all based on first-hand information where the researcher gets himself or herself involved and observes the life of the groups that is being studied. So with such detailed study, there has been an immense contribution of sociology. At the individual level, you know, it really broadens our understanding and outlook about the society. And it also helps individual understand human society and how the whole social system works. As we have discussed, sociologists are concerned with society. They look out for explanation to the phenomenon around them. They look out for solution to social problems also, say in terms of poverty, unemployment, which has been a positive contribution to the society. Studies conducted by sociologists in order to the problems faced by the tribes or other weaker section of society has also helped even the government, you know, to frame welfare programs. Um, as my area of interest is on gender, you know, I just wanted to take this opportunity to raise just a few questions to the students. You know, you all are learned scholars. Am I audible? Ma'am, uh, the slide, the PPT is not moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, see, I, yeah, I wasn't planning to talk of this, okay, but it okay, just came okay. to my mind. Uh -huh. Okay, okay <laughs> gender okay, is okay, a yeah. part of my interest, so I thought maybe I should just speak a little bit because the next slide no, is on a totally different uh, topic. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, uh, uh, we are viewing only the mm, title page of the PPT that you have shared. Relevance of the theology in contemporary. Oh, it's like that. Okay, okay. Let me just yeah, see. Yeah. So that. the other okay. slides are not. Yeah. Okay, let me just see, then maybe there is a, yeah. okay, uh, let me just try again. Mm -hmm. You should have told me this. 
Hai. Dia suka. <laughs> okay. Uh, is it is it visible now? Or is it still the yeah, same? It's uh, let me yeah, yeah, just. We are at the research methodology page now. Page now. Okay. And I'm okay. This page, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but can you hear me? Whatever yes, that yes. I have. It's very clear. Okay. Yes, audible, okay yeah. Fine. Yeah. See, because I, it's like I'm speaking to an empty uh, to a blank screen, so I really don't know whether okay. I'm audible or not. You know, it's technology has brought us near, mm -hmm. but then the problem is like it's like I'm speaking to an empty screen. You know, and I don't yes, know exactly yes. know if students can hear me or not. In case if there is any dis discrepancy, just let me know. Okay, we'll mm -hmm. clarify that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have discussed on the research methodology. We said there are two methods: quantitative and qualitative, and these two are very important methods in sociology okay because it helps us get that information as sociology is based on first and information so these two methods qualitative and quantitative are being met used by the scholars and so I also wanted to talk a little bit on uh, gender okay so, uh, this is my area of interest I was thinking of not sharing but maybe it's I just feel like I should also just talk a little bit on gender okay and all of you are very learned scholars Okay, so I just wanted to raise some questions. Do you think our society is equal? You know, in our society, there is this kind of um, tendency to think, or we kind of uh, keep women as inferior and men as superior. And whenever there is, okay, even in institutions also, when you plan this program, I mean, I don't know whether uh, when you give in charge, I don't know if when you give in charge to the female students, whether they really say yes, or whether they point fingers at the boy saying, you should do this, you should do this. Okay, in most cases, in my experience also, whenever we tell students to do something, assignments, then they'll point the girls, the female students will point their fingers at the male students saying, not me, let him do it. Okay, this is how we, it's in our, so uh, this, um, uh, that women, women are considered to be inferior to men. Don't you think it's the mentality on how we look at the world around us. Don't you think that it is because we have been socialized as a female that I that I should not talk pub publicly? Okay, that has a great effect in my life also. I've also experienced that. So what I wanted to uh, share today is that all of you are uh, very well educated. Have you ever thought that we need to bring about an equal society? Or how can we bring about an equal society? You know, it has to start from us. We cannot expect somebody to come and tell us that, okay, your site is equal. It has to start from us. So as an educated student, I want you all, male and female, to take this step to bring about equality. How can you do? The very basic way on how we can do is the whole process of, of our socialization. The, pro the whole process on how we are being trained from the time we are born right so this whole process of gender socialization on how a male should be a male is supposed to be masculine a female is supposed to be feminine okay this whole inequal treatment needs to be changed okay let's strive to bring an equal society okay okay so now i move on to my um uh, second theme i that is on career in sociology see if we look at this uh, images we see that a student of sociology can apply for a number of employment opportunities available, right? This also applies not just for sociology, even from students from other, other uh, streams will also have a number of opportunities. So as a student, you know, it is very important uh, to set... Me, yeah, yeah. I'll just intervene here again, the slide is yeah. not moving again, yeah. It's moving in mind, so I actually oh. don't know what is the problem. That's why. <laughs> okay, let me do it again. I think there is some technical problem. Let me try again. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. It's, fine. Uh, it's, it's, it's moving now, or is, is it working now? Can you see my screen? No, it's not visible yet. Okay. Then let, let me share it. Let me try it again from current slide how about now it's no, still it's not, not, uh, it's not okay. what is visible now in my screen uh, the presenting button is also not shown now so I'm just seeing the 
list of participants in my screen. In your screen. Okay, then let me just check it again. Let me just present and I can again. See you in your screen, yeah. Oh, you can see me. Okay, yes. fine. Um, let me cancel it. Well, let me just. I have actually met so much. I thought that I would not have any problem. I tried my best, but see, in, in this uh, in technology, the internet connectivity, sometimes, you know, it, we have a problem. Is it visible now? Yes, I'm seeing the slide now, but it's in the title. Slide. Again, okay, so I yes. really don't know what is the problem. Let's try this again. Can you see now? Is the slide moving or not? No, it's not moving. It's still the slide. not moving. Okay, anyhow, my slide doesn't yeah, have yeah, much. Yeah. I'm seeing branches so, of sociology now, yeah. Branches of sociology. Yeah, yeah. Carrier. Okay, let's just go. Okay, How about yes, now? Yes, yes, it's visible now, yes. Okay, okay, so fine. Mm -hmm. So here, is, if we look at this diagram, let, let's just go in this slide only, otherwise it's so distracting. Fine. Okay, so if we look at this um, diagram, see, we see a number of uh, jobs opportunity for a sociology student. Okay, this will also apply even to the other students of other disciplines as well. So as a student, you know, it is very important to set your priorities right. <laughs> My dear students, graduating and continuing student, you know, you all have got your admission in this college to pursue higher education, right, to get the bachelor degree. So your studies should be your priority. You know, you must, you must have faced hurdles, hardship, timely submission of assignments, right? And even online crunches and all those. But but even, but even all of you have been determined to follow your dreams, especially for the graduating students. You have done your best, and now within a short span of time, you'll be graduating. Likewise, in life, you know, it's very important to set your goal and be determined to reach that goal. Be clear with your goal. This is what I want to focus on. You know, you need to focus on what you want to succeed. Say, for example, you know, you wanted to, after your BA, especially for the graduate students uh, who will be graduating very soon, after your BA, like you plan to go on for MA, then a very close friend of yours on the other side is uh, preparing for a competitive exam. As both of you discuss your plan one fine day, your friend, let's say, he's a very, he or she is a very influential speaker and keeps talking of all the good points of um, competitive exam then you get swayed by what your friend said. And then you, though you have planned to go on with your master's, then you said, let me go on with a competitive exam. Then you change your plan, then you start preparing. After a year, you realize that's not what you want. You wanted to do with master's. Then after losing one year, you apply for admission, then continue MA. So who is at lost? You know, so one has to have a very clear mind of what you wanted to do. Don't just get swayed with what people talk. Have a fix your. You have to know what you want to do, and try, try to reach that goal. Let me just share my experiences. You know, after I graduate, like you all, you know, I was also really thinking what I should do. Whether I should go on with this, that. There were a lot of people telling me do this, do that, and so on. I was planning to do MSW, then I planned and I was supposed to go to Delhi for the entrance exam. All plans were met, you know, how I should go, where I should stay. And during those time, we hardly traveled by air. So parents, family, met arrangement on how I should go. All those arrangements were met. Then after those okay, arrangements were met, but then though it was me, okay, taking the decision to pursue with MSW, but then within me, there was this doubt that keeps telling me, am I really satisfied to continue with MSW? You know, anxiety, tension kept hold of me at the time. I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, you know. Then I keep praying. Okay, I, I prayed so much because I really don't know whether the decision that I have taken, all plans were made, whether that is really good for me or not. Then finally, at the last moment, you know, I decided that, I will rather continue with MS Sociology than MSW. That was a very hard decision to, for me to make. You know, I was stuck in between uh, two, uh, like this diagram. Let me just, uh, okay, there is a, okay. Like this, this way, that way, the other way. 
I made the decision that I will continue my uh, MA in sociology, then go for MSW. So I continued MA in sociology. Those two years of MA, you know, it just passed by quickly, which made me think, is it because I studied a subject that interests me that time goes by so quickly? You know, here from my experiences, I want to focus and I want to share that one need to have a strong mind. You know, at that moment of my life, had I not had the courage to stand on what I wanted? Or had I just said, since I already planned to go to Delhi, let me go, we have already made all the expenditure, then I might not be where I am now today. Neither I might be talking or speaking with you all today. Right. You should keep God at the first place. Trust him. He will guide your path. Today, you know, social media has taken for a good hold of our life. During our introductory session, when we were admitted in MA, one of our faculty was telling us that we have to eat sociology, drink sociology, and sleep sociology. Today, it's like we drink, eat, and sleep Facebook, Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, is it not? There are, these are both, there are both pros and cons for using social media. If you get so occupied, you know, with using Instagram or Facebook, what good will that bring to you? You need to learn time management. You can connect with your friends, no doubt, through social media, but you have to set a limit to that. You have to know your priorities, set your priorities, and we focus on it. Especially for the graduating students, it must be a dilemma, you know, to think of what to do after graduation. Some of you might have already made up your mind. Some of you might still be in the process of making up your mind what to do. Remember, there is no shortcut to success. You know, you, I want to make this point very clear that without hard work, perseverance, there is no success. Another experience I want to share from my own life is that, uh, see, after I completed my, my master, I wanted to go on with PhD. Then I applied for PhD in the same institution that I got my master's degree. My MA marks were fairly good. And when we gave the entrance, I, uh, I felt like I did fairly very well. So I was hoping uh, for a positive, uh, um, positive result. But when the results were declared, I wasn't selected. And that was a hard thing for me to accept. I gave my best, but suddenly I, I faced failure. You know, I was feeling very low, but then I didn't let that failure take hold of me. I stumbled, I fall, but then I stood up and I said, yes, I can do it. Later on, I applied for a PhD in IIT Guwahati. You know, I knew it was a very tough competition out there, you know, but then I prepared well for the entrance and then I got selected out of the many applicants. So what I wanted to say is that success sometimes doesn't come very easy. You stumble, you fall, but take it as a part of life. Okay, you have to work hard to earn whatever you want to do in life. You might face failure in life, failure in your exams, hurdles, or getting marks lesser than your expectations. But at that moment, you know, don't just stumble. Even in those darkest moments of life, don't get discouraged. Remember, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going okay so with these few words i once again thank the department for letting me be a part of this celebration and i'm sorry that there were some uh, um, problems with my ppt that you could not see some of it but i hope that when i speak you could have heard clearly and once again i congratulate the graduating students and i wished all of you success in your life. Thank you.